Greetings, friends. Certain places have a history of misfortune. Chazal say, Shem was a place predestined for misfortune. In Shem, they violated Dina. In Shem, the brothers sold Yosef. In Shem, the kingdom of the house of David was split. What about Gaza? I'm indebted to our dear son-in-law, Rabbi Avi Hess, for bringing the following to my attention. Sefer Devarim states, quote, as for the Avim who dwell in open cities until Gaza, the Kaftorim who went out of Kaftor destroyed them and dwelled in their place. Rashi says on this passage, the Avim are of the Pelishtim. Because of the oath which Abraham swore to Abimelech, Israel was not able to take their land away from them. The oath to which Rashi refers takes place in Parshas Vayera, where Abraham Avinu makes a pact with Abimelech, king of Gerar. Apparently, Abimelech's territory included Gaza. Because of the pact, Avram's descendants were bound not to enter Gaza until the Kaftorim evicted the Avim. The trouble in Gaza goes back a long way. Here's how the Torah describes the pact, quote, So Abraham took flocks and cattle and gave them to Abimelech, and the two of them entered into a covenant. Abraham set seven ewes of the flock by themselves, and Abimelech said to Abraham, What are these seven ewes which you have set by themselves? Listen please to the earth-shaking words of the Midrash on these Pesukim. Whoa! HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Hashem, said to Abraham, you gave seven ewes to Abimelech against my wishes. Therefore, I swear by your life that I will delay the happiness of your children for seven generations. Furthermore, I swear by your life that Abimelech's children will kill from amongst your children seven righteous people. Furthermore, they will destroy seven sanctuaries of your children. Furthermore, my ark will go around in the land of the Pelishtim for seven months. Art Scroll comments, although it would have been improper for Avraham to push off Abimelech entirely, he could have sufficed with an oath. But as stated in Eliyahu Rabbah and other places, it was wrong of Avraham to enter into a covenant with Abimelech who was an idolater. An apparently logical agreement between our father Abraham and Abimelech resulted in catastrophe through the millennia down to the present horrible war in Gaza. The lesson of this medrash seems to be that we are not allowed to rely on other nations. Ain od milvado, he who had been shown in order to know that Hashem, He is God. There is none beside Him. Am Yisroel has to learn to place our trust only in Hashem. My friends, I would now like to quote from my book, Hold On, Surviving the Days Before Mashiach. Quote, There is almost certainly going to come a time possibly very soon, when like the children of Israel at the Red Sea, we are going to be literally surrounded and we have no logical hope for survival. What will we do then? We will have only one place to turn. The words of King David, quote, all the nations surround me, in the name of Hashem, I cut them down. 
They encircle me. They also surround me. In the name of Hashem, I cut them down. They encircle me like bees, but they are extinguished as a fire does thorns. In the name of Hashem, I cut them down. When all apparently logical methods fail, we realize there is nothing left besides Hashem. In ancient Egypt, Hashem rescued us at the last second. We always hit bottom before we bounce up. As it says in Psalm 30, in the evening one lies down weeping, but with dawn a cry of joy. At that time, we will turn to Hashem with all our heart, with all our soul and everything we possess and beg him to save us. And now I quote from Yalkut Shimoni, quote, Rabbi Yitzchak taught, in the year in which Mashiach will be revealed, all the nations of the world will be in conflict. The king of Persia will quarrel with the king of Arabia, and the king of Arabia will go to the king of Aram to seek counsel from him. And the king of Persia will destroy the entire world. The nations will be confused and agitated and will be seized with fear and pains like the pangs of birth. Israel too will be agitated and confused, saying, what should we do? Where shall we go? Hashem will then say to them, my children, do not fear. All that I have done, I have done for your sake. Do not fear. For the time of your redemption has come. And this final redemption will not be like the first redemption from Egypt. For the first redemption was accompanied by pain and grief and was followed by subjugation to other nations. But the final redemption will be without pain and will not be followed by subjugation to others. May Hashem have mercy upon us and bring the Gula Shalem with a speedy coming of Mashiach Ben David. Good Shabbos!